Hello internet, let's do another of these vlog style videos. Let me just talk about my week and how things have been going. I kind of like doing these, they're very easy content. It's it's something that's, with my current schedule, it's really easy to just sit down for like 15 minutes and do these. So, I know it's not the most interesting thing in the world. I am a gaming channel, channel after all, but take what you can get, I guess. Things have been real, real scarce on the channel. And on that note, really doesn't seem like that's going to be changing. I'm My brother was gone this week, so I actually had time to record some and I, I did get some work done, but ultimately I just feel so terrible that it's it's just I just am not doing anything with my time. And this reminds me a lot of you know several years ago, um I had I had nothing to do most days and I just sat and did nothing and it was really really bad for me mentally. And then, you know, things started picking up around the time I started doing YouTube and having that routine is, is really crucial. You know, people, I think, underestimate the value of routine. Um, most of us have something that we do on the regular basis. And whenever that gets broken, it really can be destabilizing. So I would like to get back to things. It just the motivation is not there. And it seems like every time I start to get a break, something else terrible happens. Like, I feel like my whole life is just uh, reacting to a variety of one bad thing after another. So my brother was gone for the span of two or three days. I felt great. It was amazing how much better I feel when he's not here, how much more comfortable and safe I feel in the house when he's not here. And then, of course, he comes home and, uh, you know, nothing has really changed. And honestly, the minute that he came home, I immediately deflated and and went back to that kind of like now I'm nervous when I walk in the bathroom now I'm nervous when I walk outside and why is he standing there you know and, and it just makes me super super uncomfortable um currently they're not here they took my niece home she was here this weekend this was our our Christmassy weekend I guess uh since we're not going to see her next week I didn't even give her I bought her some unicorn stuffed animals didn't even give them to her because I was sleeping when they did presents. So I guess it'll be a New Year's gift for the next time she comes. Um, other than that, uh, things with work have been weird. We we changed to a new location uh, and we've been having some issues with that. Work in general has been rough this week because we got quite a huge snowstorm. I would venture we got probably close to two feet of snow, which is not like a super crazy amount we often get blizzards every year or two that are quite bad i think we were good last year we hardly got any snow at all last year but the three years prior to that we had blizzards every year uh which was was quite derailing when you drive for a living in the middle of the night it's very difficult to clear your car in a neighborhood without making a ton of noise so it's always uh quite kind of embarrassing to go out at like two in the morning and scrape your car and you know, because sometimes it keeps snowing. It's like if it snows in the morning, it's OK because I can shovel during the day and then have it prepared to leave for work in the evening. But this time, uh, for instance, it snowed from like, I don't know, noon until like 5 a.m., something like that, uh, that one night. And there's just no way to clear that ahead of time. So like that night I had to try to go to work, got in the SUV, had dug out, you know, what I could couldn't even get out of my out of my couldn't even get on the road like I was parked at the curb I couldn't even make it to the road uh and it was really really terrible and I actually didn't go to work that night which is super uh makes me anxious because I they they my my work is very strict about working I work seven days a week 365 and if we can't come to work we actually are supposed to find our own replacement which of course no one wants to do so yeah, I was real nervous about that. Um, and the snow has just made things difficult. My car is acting up. I can't pull it out of park unless I... It's complicated, but there's this whole thing where it's like I think a safety mechanism that is triggering by accident. So I can't even shift out of park unless I turn the car off and push the key in this little slot to free up the, the shifter. It's a super weird <laughs> specific thing that's happening. It's uh, very, very annoying. And uh, yeah, it's just uh, it was not a great week weather wise. And then uh, on Saturday, so <laughs> so stupid. A couple months ago, so I have um, mental health support through the state. Uh, I get uh, support from the state to support my mental health treatment, and it goes towards you know my uh, 
like my counseling that I have, you know, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, whatever I, you know, my schedule is at the time, helps pay for my medication, stuff like that. Any visits I need with my my doctor that prescribes my medication, all that is is supported by the state. I feel weird about it. You know, I am mostly able-bodied. Everyone in my life keeps telling me that I'm not a functional adult and that I need support. You know, there was a time when they were, my therapists were encouraging me to be on disability because I just, just cannot function. Uh, and it's largely connected to my mental health issues. And I want to be really clear. There's nothing wrong with being on disability if you are someone who needs that support. Unfortunately, I've known quite a few people in my lifetime who have abused the system and are not actually properly limited and they still choose to collect money from the government. So I have a very negative view of myself being on on any kind of social security program. Um, So I would really like to not require that support, but I just cannot afford, you know, all these appointments and, and, and medications and stuff. It would be several extra hundred dollars a month. Um, and I got a packet, you know, like a couple months ago from my my insurance people saying, you know, oh, it's time to update your finances and make sure you're still making under the amount of money, you know, that you need in order to, to be on this program. So I filled everything out. I sent them a pay statement uh, from my work. I sent them a copy of a bank statement that showed all the deposits from my job for, you know, the period of a month. And apparently uh, they, want an, they want my tax information. And the problem is I got this letter on December 19th, but it said it had to be in by the end of October. So my guess would be that the post office with the election and all the mail-in ballots has screwed things up and I didn't get the letter until two months later. So now, you know, it says explicitly uh, contact us by October or, you know, we're going to cut your benefits. And now I have to scramble to try and uh, get a hold of them and explain what happened. Uh, And of course, I don't know if they'll believe me because... People lie all the time to try and take advantage of the system and things like that. So I'm concerned they're going to think I'm trying to hide my taxes from them, which I'm not. Um, and I, the only reason I can think they would even ask for my tax information is if they don't believe me and that they, or or that my pay went up slightly. So like they don't think I make the right amount anymore. So I'm very concerned I'm going to lose my insurance. And if I lose my insurance, I cannot afford to pay for my mental health treatment. And I'm already kind of spiraling and I'm thinking like I might have to make some hard decisions on whether or not I can have my medication all the time. Or maybe I have to skip a few appointments that I really need, you know, and very nervous about that. Um, And of course, it's the weekend. It's Sunday as I record this. I got the letter yesterday, so I'm not going to even be able to contact them until tomorrow. And tomorrow I actually have to make up some work stuff because of the snow screwing everything up. So like, I don't even know if I, you know, I'm just worried about it. I'm worried I'm going to lose my insurance. I'm concerned about, cause I just, I don't think I can afford all the stuff that they, they help me with. So very nervous about that. And that's what I mean. I just feel like my whole life, I just hurdle between bad things. Like, uh, like four months ago I was doing fine. Everything was okay. And then my brother started deteriorating pretty hard and that triggered my PTSD And then, you know, we had that like altercation where he got really aggressive and there were death threats and he was removed from the house. And then it's like, okay, everything felt okay for, you know, a couple of days where I felt safe and okay. And then the family decided they wanted to bring him home. And that was a horrible experience and just feeling like they don't care about me and they don't listen to me. And that was very difficult, you know, because these are people that I've come to you know, love my family and, and it felt like they were not making the right decisions. And that was upsetting. Then he comes home and now I'm nervous and horrible. And I have to adjust my whole life because of this, this outside influence that I have no control over then work stuff. And then my brother goes away, but he comes right back. And all this is just a constant, like up and down, up and down, up and down. And it's just been a lot more downs. Like, if I lose my insurance, I mean, that's a hell of a Christmas present, you know, and just feeling real down. And, you know, the only thing that I've really been doing that's positive is writing. And honestly, with my depression, I'm starting to feel more and more like that's a huge waste of my time. Starting to feel like YouTube is a waste of my time. You know, I think about 
you know, wanting to work on something to get to a point where I could earn a little bit of money, you know, that's the point of, of YouTube and the point of wanting to write the book is to, to get to a position where I could start earning some kind of money, even if it's not like, I don't expect life changing amounts, but you know, 30, 50 bucks a month, anything would be helpful. And lately I've just been looking at it and I feel like, you know, what's the point? I look at my content. I'm not happy with my content. I feel like I'm very rough around the edges and I don't, I don't know, like I just audio quality sometimes, like I don't know how to properly equalize and I can't afford a lot of the stuff that like a, a real YouTuber has that makes things so much easier. You know, I can't get a soundboard and an XLR and, and have a, like a, you know, a preamp and all that good stuff. So it's just, I have a USB microphone that plugs into my computer and then I'm limited to what I can use software wise in windows. You probably don't care about that, but like, you know, I just, I watch my old content and I hear the voice quality and I hear my commentary and I'm like, this is not someone I would watch, you know, and I just started getting depressed about it. And then I've been writing quite a lot. How many words are we up to here? I gave you a word count last week. I think it was like 10,000 or something like that. Uh, I haven't been writing as much. Where's my word count? Move that. 20,369 words. Um, so, you know, roughly doubled in the last week. It's honestly slower progress than I expected. Last time I wrote a novel, it probably took me, I mean, less than a month, probably about three weeks to, to write my last novel. And we're already two weeks in and I'm only 20,000 words. I feel, you know, like I'm not making progress. I feel like it's slow going. I feel like even when I finish a chapter, very few of them, I wrote one chapter that I really, really liked, um, where the guy talks about meeting his wife for the first time and they're on the school bus. It was just a sweet little thing. And I really liked that chapter, but everything else, I just feel like I'm on chapter, uh, you probably don't care. This is not great content. I'm on chapter 11. I only really have one chapter that I really like. So I'm pretty, pretty unhappy with my, my writing. And it's the same thing. You know, I listened to writing podcasts and I just got in my head about it. And I was like, you know, what do you think is going to happen? You know, do you really think people want to read your book? Do you really think that of all the books on Amazon, you could even sell, you know, a hundred copies? Like, what do you think? You know, you're, you're not, it's just the depression, like, and I imagine people who deal with it know exactly what I'm talking about. That negative self-talk is what my therapist would call it, where you get in this, uh, you know, negative headspace and you just end up feeding yourself these lines uh, that like, it comes from your depression, but it's, it, it keeps you stuck, right? You're not making progress. You're stuck. You're, you're, you're incapable of moving forward because you feel like you're not good enough or that it's, you know, it's such a defeatist, fatalist kind of thing. So just been dealing with that a lot. And then the insurance thing was like a kick in the gonads. I just, that came out of the blue. It just family was like, oh, you have a letter. And I looked at it and it's postmarked like October. It's postmarked October 26th which even then it was only like five days before I had to respond, which I think is ridiculous. Um, but I can't even tell them like, I can't even tell them like, Oh yeah, I didn't get it to December. It's postmarked December. It's postmarked back in October. So they're going to think that I got it and just never did anything about it. We'll fall down then. Um, so, okay. Fall down then. Great. Um, so, you know, I'm, 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 <laughs> Things are just, uh, it's such a whiny thing too. Like, I just feel like I'm whining about my problems, but I don't know what to do. I don't know how people deal with these things. I don't know. I feel like everyone experiences this. I feel like everyone goes to work and, and lots of people have jobs where they don't feel satisfied or fulfilled. A lot of people can't afford their homes, can't afford, especially this year with COVID and everything that's going on. People are in real threat of losing their homes. Many people have lost their jobs. Many people are on unemployment trying to stretch what little bit of money they have to, to make it. I'm not alone, but you know, lots of people experience these things, but I don't know how they handle it. I don't know how people keep going. Like growing up, I was extremely poor, like well below the poverty line. 
dealing with hunger, like as a child, you know, which is something we hear about a lot in society is children going hungry. I, that, I was that kid, right? Uh, you know, occasionally getting government cheese to live off of that kind of stuff. So like grew up way below the poverty line where things were very, very difficult. And I don't know how my family kept going. Like there were so many of us kids. We had a terrible house that was falling apart. I don't know how my family kept going. And I just don't know how, is that a skill that adults learn that I just haven't learned yet? Because I just feel so hopeless. And then I get in my head like, okay, well, we can turn this around. You know, all it takes is like, you know, publish a couple books. And, you know, the, the YouTube strategy was scattershot. And it was, you know, the numbers were ticking up. You know, over time we could build something. But then I also feel like what a naive, childish thing that is to think like, oh, you could make money on the Internet. Like it just feels like such a foolish endeavor like I should just give up and go get a job in a factory somewhere where I can earn more money and just accept my fate as kind of a blue collar piece of garbage that's never going to amount to anything, which is super dark, I guess, for, for this conversation. I generally try to shelter you from the majority of those really dark thoughts. In fact, let's just wrap this up. I hear my family slamming stuff around downstairs. I don't know what's going on with me. I just, it is the depression. I'm so sad and unhappy. It just seems like every time I get motivated to do something, it just takes the wind out of my sails even further. Like life just is like, oh, he's starting to feel better. Let's send him this letter. You know, let's knock him down a peg. And it gets frustrating. Anyway, let's wrap this up. Everybody, thanks for watching. Thanks for showing up. Going to keep posting uh, Cataclysm content as I'm able and uh, probably going to keep doing these vlog things once a week or whatever. And, uh... I don't even know what to say. Thanks for listening, and uh, I'll see you uh, next time.